Our next speaker is an associate professor at University Tunku Abdul Rahman, Malaysia, and his research interests include agriculture, economic development, education and educational research, energy economics, income inequalities, poverty and vulnerability, poverty in Islamic economics, religion, risks, and risk management, coping social issues, social sciences, and urban studies. He has published widely in various local and international retreat journals, scopus, chapters in books and research papers on the issues of poverty, vulnerability, and social protection. Small and medium-sized enterprises are said to account for more than 90% of companies and 50% of global employment, with SMEs accounting for up to 55% of GDP. However, the whole subject of entrepreneurship seems to be shifting away from the importance of small enterprises toward larger corporations. The importance of relationship between innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurship in moving firms and small businesses towards sustainable products, services, and technology cannot be overstated. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our privilege to introduce our next speaker. I feel nauseous, believe me. Never had a lot of sh come easy. Had to work hard, struggle just to be me. Had to rise up just so they could see me. Did what I had to do just to feed me And what was left over I put towards my dreaming But the only thing in life that has meaning Are the things you gotta work for, believe me Take into your hands a plan your own hands can Please welcome Professor Dr. Abdul Sanadki Here to talk about leading the way into the future of entrepreneurship in 21st century Okay, thank you very much um, for giving me that this opportunity. Uh, you can see my screen, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, thank you very much, and thank you everyone for attending uh, this uh, insightful uh, conference. And um, my topic today is about leading the way into the future of entrepreneurship in 21st century. And uh, we have uh, listened to uh, three of um, presentations of our colleagues, uh, very insightful, uh, where we talk about the mindset, about the IP, and also about digital marketing and business models. Um, now I'm going to uh, shift, which is something related uh, to what had been uh, discussed, but in maybe um, a different perspective, where, uh, where we are going or where we are leading in, in you know, the future of entrepreneurship. Um, if you go and write the word entrepreneurship in Google, you will have something like that. And as you can see, in previous centuries, um, the world of entrepreneurship was not that really famous. Then um, starting, we can see from maybe 2000, where we start, this word or term uh, have popularity. And you can see by 2019, 2020, it reached the peak. So means that nowadays is more people are aiming for this entrepreneurship, or they would like to be an entrepreneur, which is something that uh, we really uh, be proud of because when we have more entrepreneur, we have more innovations, more creativities, more product and services, and that will uh, make our life easier. So uh, what is entrepreneurship? I just um, want to give a definition so that uh, you will understand uh, later when we talk about other concepts. Entrepreneurship is the act of starting a company or a series of enterprises, but with the goal of making profit. So the, the most visible form of entrepreneurship that we know is establishment of a new firm. Uh, like for example, Facebook, uh, Grab, uh, Uber, 
So they come with a very innovative ideas and start uh, companies, new companies. So an entrepreneur is someone who has the capacity and drive to build, manage, and succeed in a new enterprise, as well as the risk that comes with it in order to generate also money. So entrepreneurs offer referred to be innovators or sources of new ideas. Usually you cannot be an entrepreneur if you do not have a genuine idea or a creative idea that lead to an innovation, lead to a product or a service that can be beneficial and also can make a profit for it. So um, type of entrepreneur we have those, as we say, innovators, usually they find new approaches, new methods, new product, new services that add value through solving a problem in a unique way or in a unique manner. So we have another one, which is a creator. A creator means that he makes something in you or see a problem in different way or solve it in different way. I want to mention that Innovation and creativity, they are different, even though we use it together. We need to create first to innovate. Uh, you can create something, but you, you may not success to, to make it a useful, to make it a product or, or to have it a value. So innovation come through creation. So we have another thing is a mar uh, market maker, which are those people who innovate or invent uh, their market from the future perspective. For example, by asking what the market could evolve into so that they can have an idea what to produce or what to innovate. Then you have expanders and scalers where those people, they seek out opportunities to expand open previously methods or product. So uh, these are the four type of entrepreneur. So what are the type of entrepreneurship? Uh, if we talk about entrepreneurship, we have a small business entrepreneurship, which is where people usually run or manage a company and employ family members, friends to run it. Then we have a scalable startup where it is the most now famous form of starting a company's own entrepreneurship where this is, we begin with the company with the belief that our idea has a potential uh, to, uh, uh, I mean, alter the world, to attract the investor uh, and, and, and make them believe in your idea and invest their money. And therefore, most of the companies started like that, those uh, famous companies. They have a genuine idea, then they try to attract investors. Then we have another one, which is a large, company entrepreneurship or corporation like Google, Microsoft, those companies, they are huge business. They are thrive and develop by introducing a new and creative product and services. And uh, most of them actually, they buy uh, small companies or small innovative companies, you know, uh, to, to expand also their, their, their business. And the last one, we have social entrepreneurship. This is more, mostly focused and, and, and really care about creating products and services that address the social challenges like climate change. Uh, basically, this type of entrepreneurship is their philosophy does not actually to labor for a good uh, for the profit, but for the good for the society. So they, they try to solve social problems rather than uh, looking for profit compared to the previous three uh, uh, companies. So what are the entrepreneurial trend for the future? So how, how we are going, I mean, to adequately and genuinely start a business on entrepreneur and we can success in doing so. So we have three things that we need to focus. The first, th the first thing that we are now talking about the fourth industrial revolution, and we are talking about the digital age. So digitalization, agility and resilience and speed. That is very important. 
because digital is making work better for human and the same times a human better at work once you can see now i am presenting these slides and we are from different countries from philippines from india from malaysia so make rather than we have to travel so that is digitalization makes our life you know uh, better and, and our work easier and if we remember that during the covid or the, pand the pandemic covid 19 uh, two years ago the firms were responded fast and those firms who responded fast they enjoyed a strategic edge over their rivals some of the firms they really integrated the technology because we suddenly start working from home you know um starting the, also the e-commerce delivery uh, digital marketing everything become digitalized so that is very important and if we talk about the smes the small and medium enterprises also they may promote their goods to a broader audience with the use of website platforms that contribute a digital track which improves interaction between customer seller and partners or, or business partners so digitalization is a must for nowadays entrepreneurial uh, or entrepreneurship if you want to be an entrepreneur and you do not have the, the skills of this digitalization and the speed of how you integrate this digitalization then it will be a bit difficult uh, for for a person to start so if we talk about the speed for example um, uh, you know that Nokia was uh, one of the um, uh, among or the, the best, uh, I mean, seller of uh, mobile uh, phone uh, in, in 90s and 2000 until 2007 when the iPhone came introduced by uh, the late uh, Steve Jobs. So Nokia was not that really keen to the, uh, to the idea of how can the phone can be as a computer. What happened? Because they did not adjust to that speed of the technological change now nokia is you can see has almost no market share at all compared to samsung who was uh, mostly uh, focusing on uh, other devices electronic devices like tvs but when see the potential of of that innovation then started also to develop in a galaxy which was a competitor with iPhone. And you can see uh, Samsung now is, is one of the top or the, the first sellers on smartphone. The second, it is a new age of diverse uh, entrepreneurship. And I, I still remember the first uh, presenters talk about uh, diversity. So uh, the world also here now entering a new era of entrepreneurship that because uh, both thrilling and challenging uh, we need more women more young people and entrepreneur from all walks of life so that we will have different ideas different innovations you know and this diversity make innovation make creativity so to, it is not about only teaching or guiding entrepreneurship uh, actually it is about integrating it into, for example, the post-COVID situation where we can see how so many companies, even for example, as an educator, how we very fast, we, we, with a very short time, we have adjusted to the new situation. So it's about the integration of this entrepreneurship to the this new digital era. So, the last one is also a location independent solution. Uh, so there is no solution that work, uh, you know, everywhere will characterize the future of entrepreneurship. Now we talk about remote employees or work from home, where they provide service to solution that are, uh, uh, I mean, location, location uh, not needed. I mean, now people, they can give solution, they can give, what we say, uh, let's say, for example, in healthcare industry, um, we have so many uh, situations where uh, people undergone significant transformation in a short period of time, 
where, for example, uh, telehealth, remote diagnosis, and medical equipment are now significantly more widely and used. You can have a medical checkup also using, you know, in, in, in remotely. So these the three things that we need to put in our mind to uh, pass the way for the future of innovation, digitalization, diversity, and location independent solution. So uh, how we should lead the way into the future for, for innovation. So the first thing we need to fulfill the society need, but not only we search for novelty. Um, I mean, you can innovate something, but it is not needed by the society. So in that case, I don't think that it will be beneficial or has a value added. So if you want to be an entrepreneur, always think of creating a product, innovating a product that has a value added that society needs. So identifying and rising and met needs in society, that is very important. Second, you need to think in the long term, but not in the short term. So we have to display a long-term thinking of how our idea could be developed. And you need to make all those short-term distraction or you need to stop them, you know, in order to get away for the long-term goals. So the last one, we push for innovation. So how we push for, for innovation? So we need to enable everyone, I mean, in the society, in the company, in the society, you as an entrepreneur, uh, yourself, uh, to be an innovator. So things that we need to really need to have skills on AI technology, artificial intelligence, big data analytics, blockchain technology, machine learning, virtual reality, augmented reality, metaverse, now we are talking. So I think, I believe this is the future where more entrepreneurs should develop and bring new ideas and new innovation. So for example, um, when I talk about <clears throat> cannot see the slide very well. Okay, so when I talk um, for the first uh, one where we need to have a green energy, decarbonize our product. Um, we have hydrogen plants and cars where we need to think. So one possible solution is to use this new type of fuel plane that doesn't produce harmful emission. So actually there are companies they have started uh, to do that. And uh, later I will show there is even an, an, an airport uh, uh, innovated in UK for that particular of this, uh, what we say, uh, flying cars and, 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 and hydrogen uh, cars. Then um, some also, also they are thinking of uh, skyscrapers that move wind and sunlight into energy. So they use uh, skyscrapers cars, tall building, and they install on the top, you know, of the you know uh, wind turbine, or in the you know the glass that they use it. They use it, you know, like a solar transparent solar. So, for example, University of Michigan research team has developed a transparent color neutral solar cell with a greater efficiency that can be installed in these uh, skyscrapers. Um, another one, for example, in the health industry, uh, we have these artificial eyes. Also, uh, we have team of researchers from University of Sydney and uh, University of New South Wales have also tested uh, the bionic eyes and the results were uh, very good. So those blind people, they can also now, they can see. Uh, we have cancer sniffing robots where also um, uh, an AI power system uh, that is an accurate as a trained dogs that use it to sniff this type of diseases through the urine, through the blood. So 
that is also in the development. They, they have not, I mean, still in, in infancy, but the development is there. So we have also internet for everyone. Well, also Google use uh, helium balloons to beam the internet to the inaccessible area. Facebook developing a named aircraft also was known as Akela to provide internet or access of internet to all those remote area where they can cannot live. So for security, we are talking about vertical farming. For example, there is um, uh, four uh, guys from Malaysia, they develop a city farm or company, we call it City Farm Malaysia, established 2016. They started with a joke and uh, they started with a pumping system or irrigation system doesn't work. Then they come to an idea of using that system for a vertical farming. So you have also agroecology, which is an application of ecological concept and principle in farming. So we have uh, 3D printing cities and uh, we have a modular homes. So these all ideas that, I mean, still need a, a future innovation. And, and make it better because these all technologies we have just started and it has, there's a, a huge potential on those all technologies. So I want to also emphasize that uh, the innovation, not it must be something new. You can bring existing something by re-innovate it. So first, the second thing why we say is thinking of the long term, not the short term. So we need to align the innovation with the long-term business goal and become an integral part of the corporate uh, system or uh, of a corporate uh, or a company, your company. So for example, you may think of expanding into a new geographic market um, or maybe finding a new demographic uh, uh, market that you produce your, your, or your uh, market your, your product uh, for example, um, maybe you are thinking of uh, find, uh, innovating a smartphone for those blind people or for the deaf people. So it has some of the, the options or some of the, the specs that uh, sp specialize for them. So it, it's a new, a new market. Also, we need to consider the customer acquisition cost when you do your marketing. Uh, if it is beneficial or no, the lifetime value for the customer and how this new product you, you are inventing can integrate back to your corporate structure, to your company structure. But again, you need to remember that in order we, to success in the long term, also we need to focus on the mid, a middle term. So in, you cannot go to the long term without having a strategy in the middle term. Another thing is um, pushing for innovation. As I say, we need to innovate for the need, not novelty. So we need to innovate for something that society needed. And as I said just now, reinvention is needed. Uh, iPhone, when it was invented, is, was not the first, uh, I mean, time. Motorola, if I'm not mistaken, was the first company that tried to uh, do something like a smartphone. So the, I, but of course they couldn't develop it in the way that it was a, or has a value. So uh, Apple come and take the idea and innovate the iPhone. And after that, we can see how the smartphone industry is developed. Another thing that we need to consider is we need to integrate smart machines with the humans. So now we are talking about robots. So you can see that, for example, uh, UK Post, uh, they are using uh, robots or smart machines for delivery uh, for sorting the parcels. So how we integrate those robots, those smart machines with humans because we are working with them. So it means now we have to think in the way that uh, those smart machines and robots are a part of our also of our life. So we have to integrate them in uh, with the human. Digitalize the entire supply chain because customers today want to personalize their goods online and have them shipped in days. So 
uh, Alibaba doing that. You go and buy, you can even personalize your product, your shoe, your uh, clothes. There are so many, uh, I mean, uh, companies now, they are personalizing, personalizing their products. And when you want to order, or customer nowadays, when they want to order, they want this to be even within a few days. So how this could happen if you don't integrate or digitalize your entire supply chain? So the area that also we can focus for the innovation is, I say, self-driving cars. Uh, we have 3D or even 4D printing. We can print houses. We can print so many, even medical products or organism. So they are using that 3D printing on that. Social media, we can see more, you know, uh, social web website or social application are coming days after days. That's a huge market, and especially for the marketing. Uh, applied AI, uh, we have now mostly the, the, uh, the artificial intelligence that we have is a weak artificial intelligence or uh, a, a, a medium or a general artificial intelligence, but the applied one, the very strong one, we still not that really reach to that. The applied AI is the branch of artificial intelligence that brings it out of the lab into the real world. So that company is still having a lot of research to do on that. So we have green tech, we talk about hydrogen fuel cell, drone technology, you know, uh the internet of thing we talk also about 5g technology blockchain and you can see how it changed the, the what we call it uh the, the the currency or the digital currency so when we talk about the blockchain is not about digital currency we can use uh, blockchain technology for others for example here in utah in our university we are using it to uh, i mean to check the the uh, the originality of the certificate for student. They will, they will be given a QR. So the employer, he just need to scan the, the barcode and the result will come from the university if this is, it is a fake or original. So this is one way of, of using, for example, blockchain technologies. There are others ways. So we have cybersecurity and resiliency. We are talking about digital age. We are using too much technologies. Cybersecurity is a must. Then we have quantum computing, where computers uh, or machines that use properties of quantum physics to store data and perform uh, 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 calculation or computation. And this is a very, very huge computers that can advance the knowledge, can advance the innovation. So we have nanotechnology. We are talking about also Li-Fi now. Uh, uh, when Companies developing the 5G technology, they have a lot of, of limitation of this technology. And uh, one of the things that they must put, I mean, uh, the antennas to be nearby, they cannot be a very long distance. So here comes the Li-Fi where uh, they use um, a technology that use light rather than the radio frequencies. So this is another potential that we can look for. So another researcher, they are talking about energy storing bricks. They develop a red bricks that we use for building and they connect it with uh, solar panels and they can store the energy there. And we have a robotic bees, uh, which is insect inspired robot with potential use in a crop uh, pollination. Uh, Walmart actually has filed a patent for a robot B that could potentially pollinate crops uh, like real bees so that we will enhance food security. So this is some of the, the idea or the areas that we need to uh, innovate. So what are the things that companies need to um, prepare for the future of entrepreneurship? First, we need to develop the skills that will be in demand. Creativity, leadership, uh, empathy, all will begin with high demand. Uh, so we need to focus on honing those abilities and understanding how to use them in the context of technology. Also the future, it is not a static, the future is dynamic. So 
by 2030, there will be no tolerance for complacency. So we need to really adapt with this fast changing in terms of development, innovation, creativity. The second is we need to embrace technology and the evolving of workplace. So companies are recognizing that creativity, which is ranked high on the World Economic Forum top 10 skills by 2020 list, cannot flourish in the limitation of an office only. So we need to give now space for those employees, uh, uh, innovators, creators. They think out of the box, let them be out of that confined space or that office. Employees motivation and innovation may come outside of nine to five PM. And the last, we need to prepare to make a difference where companies or entrepreneurs should make social responsibility as a priority in this operation. Again, we innovate for social needs, not only for novelty. We innovate something that we really need to use. So also entrepreneurs and uh, companies should recruit and keep top people who are looking for jobs where they can make positive contribution to the society, not only for profit. So that is a very important thing. Then we have how we should prepare for that. I should go very fast. I think still have five minutes only. So we have leadership uh, principles. Leadership must be built on a principle and centered on people. We need to make the shift uh, to one that emphasizes participation, cooperation, and flexibility. So when you give flexibility to your employees, then innovation will come. Uh, second, um, company culture. So our decision and process are influenced by the company culture. So the development, adaptation, and innovation need a strong culture with uh, live values. We need to have diversity also. And another thing is a social effect. We have social effect must be a part of organizing principle, uh, a compelling and an effective mission behind which teams may rally is a critical. Um, otherwise, is not going to work because if we don't have social effect, we may not innovate at all. Another thing which is very important, as the first presenter uh, mentioned, diversity and inclusion. So diversity and inclusion have never been more valuable, but nowadays it is a firm responsibility to ensure that diversity and inclusion is there. So a firm can only connect and adapt to all the variety of today's global economy and stay up with challenges or changes if it embraces inclusiveness and create a, a divert or a divert, uh, what we say, environment, environment that has diversity. The last one, which is about technology, data technology, where data technology makes it easier to make judgment based on fact, make decisions. So you as an entrepreneur as or as a manager, it is easy for you to make a decision when you have facts. So here we are talking about uh, artificial intelligence, internet of thing, uh, machine learning, medical uh, diagnosis, data analytics. This all provide forward looking forecast for outcome and important decision making. So now we talk about that, how government should support the future of entrepreneurship. The first thing is to foster the growth of entrepreneurial ecosystem. Uh, the essence of an entrepreneurial ecosystem is, is people and their culture. So we need to focus on that, the people and culture of trust and collaboration that allows them to interact successfully. And this allows for a fast, flow of talent, information, resources that help entrepreneurs quickly find what they really want, what they really need. Government also need to foster that entrepreneur ecosystem by increasing the scope of finance because you have an idea, if you, you, you have a very creative idea, you want to make it an, an innovative idea on innovation, you need to create a product, you need financing. So government need to 
increase the scope of finance to reach those uh, entrepreneurs. Promoting cooperation between researchers and the private sector. That I think government should play a very good role here to make the link between research in universities and private sector very strong. And there is a, that collaboration. Reducing the regulatory burden on entrepreneurs. So all those rules that could stop or reduce uh, the speed of uh, innovation should be, uh, I mean, uh, taken out. Also developing an IT tool for entrepreneurs uh, give them, for example, uh, innovation centers, you know, uh, where they can meet and share their ideas, uh, you know, uh, give them the technology. Government should um, make sure that uh, bring the technology, import the technology and make it accessible for those entrepreneurs in order for them to innovate. So helping entrepreneurs access the networks, and the last one is better link between education and the labor market or the industry. Well, I believe here that this is one of the most important area that we can focus on. It will be the, my last slide. So how we are going to make that link and what will be the role of universities in fostering the entrepreneurship? So the first thing is to update the current programs and create new ones to pass on entrepreneurial skills and information. And we, not, we need to have an uh, a multidisciplinary or an interdisciplinary approach and innovative teaching approaches that should be adopted so that we will have or we produce students with the, 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 the sense of entrepreneur, the, the, the mentality of entrepreneur, the mindset of entrepreneur. So universities also may serve as an incubation centers for new ideas by forcing entrepreneurship and incubation capacity for students from variety of field. I would really be happy if I can say, for example, in universities, we have innovation center where there is all the equipment and technology there where students, they can go and discover, share ideas and, and even innovate. But I think most of what we are doing at university is giving theories rather than practical things. The last one is university should build entrepreneurial uh, ecosystem collaborating with an industry and provide advice to student entrepreneur on creative and innovative ideas that could be transformed to reality. So universities should make that link with the industry, uh, discuss about what the industry think of, what the new product that these uh, companies thinks of, how to, to, to solve or what other problems they are facing, share this all with students and students may participate in that and find a good solution for that. So in here, I come to the end of my presentation. I think I took two minutes extra. I'm so sorry for that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Dr. Abel Baksanajki. 21st century entrepreneurship is about creating and growing for profit businesses and other types of social enterprises that add value beyond the traditional bottom line. 21st century entrepreneurship is about reviving civic pride and the sense of connection that comes from empowered individuals pursuing meaningful work, whether as an owner or as an employee. Your topic was indeed very timely.